We expect you to use your ability. Just don't get caught. And never, ever change into a child. In brighter news, August resident Mia French is celebrating the return of her missing pooch, Barley. The eight-month-old basset hound puppy was found outside Daryl's chicken and ribs. And that's five o'clock with Poe and Munro. For motion video games where real actors are used instead of CG characters, we've been having a bit of a resurgence in recent years. With cult classics like Contradiction Spot Liar, or award-winning games like Her Story that bring a very innovative take on the genre. Or otherwise like kind of often overlooked games that are very polished, like Late Shift. They all have been helping revive a genre that seemed pretty dead in the last couple of decades, basically since a bunch of mediocre and bad games came out in the 90s. The Shapeshifting Detective is one of the latest entries into this genre, placing you in the role of a detective sent to a small town called August to catch a killer before they strike again. You do this by interviewing suspects, asking them questions about the victim, about their connection to her and to other suspects, and try and narrow down who it was that was most likely to have killed her. This is made more interesting by the fact that the killer is randomised. There are only three possible choices, I won't say who because of course that'd be dumb, but even how their arc resolves differs depending on the information that you discover, the choices you make during the game, there's different ways to catch them out basically. It's really interesting. And Bromley got the Ten of Swords, which is, well, you know, <laughs> swords in general are bad. A game like this lives and dies by its cast. And the shapeshifting detective doubly so, because its main gimmick is that you can shapeshift into the form of other suspects to manipulate the other suspects into giving you more information. For example, if two of the suspects are sleeping together, transforming into one of them and then talking to the other one, they're more likely to give up more information, uh, which is useful for placing where people were during certain events or what they were doing, etc. etc. It's pretty cool, but it relies on good acting and good writing and the characters just having a lot of depth, which for the most part the shapeshifting detective manages to pull off. There is one character that's introduced towards the end of the game called Poe, who kind of doesn't do anything, he's kind of just there for no real good reason. Um, he feels almost like maybe this game was going to be a bit longer and he was going to be a bigger character, but he got caught essentially. Um, or I'm missing something, it's entirely possible. This game allows for multiple playthroughs and it's possible that in one of those playthroughs he's super essential, but I don't think so. The cast is comprised of a few familiar faces if you've played some of these other FMV games recently, and also some new ones that at least I didn't recognise from other games. Uh, Ashlyn Death is probably one that you might recognise if you played this studio's previous game, The Infectious Madness of Dr Decker. Um, on top of having a fantastic name, she's very good. Uh, there's also Anna Rosa Butler, who previously appeared in Contradiction Spot Liar as Emma, alongside Rupert Booth, who I think was the one that, at the very least, most of the people that I know would probably recognise the most. Uh, he played the main character in Contradiction Spot Liar, Detective Inspector Jinx, and he chewed scenery like a motherfucker in that game. Less so in this game, but still he's... He's very good, he bounces between some of the darker moments and revelations and stuff like that to also like a bit of comic relief, which I think he does a great job at being not full on comic relief for this game, but he ha injects a bit of comedy in some places where it's desperately needed, otherwise this game would be surprisingly dark. He does a good job of playing a kind of like snippy police chief that doesn't have a lot of patience for you and so he'll at the drop of a hat go from talking about information that you've gathered to going, okay, well, get back on with it, come on. Uh, it's a fantastic role, he does a very good job at it, and I definitely really recommend this. Uh, the whole cast in general are great. They play a variety of like really good roles from like an incredibly creepy photographer. Here, I've only got vodka. You're old enough to drink, right? There's also a group of tarot readers that kind of show up just before the murder and predict that the murder is going to happen. So obviously they are kind of the main suspects, at least to start with, because no one really believes that they can read the future or anything. So they just show up, see someone's going to die, then someone dies. It's kind of points to them being kind of the main antagonist and it kind of develops from there and goes in some nice ways. They do a good job of building up a kind of mythos for this world where it's not super deep, but it's got enough unanswered questions but 
kind of hints at what the, the answers to those questions are that make you interested in the world. Like, I would like to see them do something else set in this world. It would be interesting to see. Uh, the quality of the video itself is generally very good as well, as you can probably see under this video. Um, they're, they managed to avoid, like, the unnatural looking loops that a lot of games in this genre kind of fall into, where you just sit and wait, basically, for whatever video is playing to loop and the way they get around this is just that they have a bunch of b-roll and they cut between it in a more natural way. One of my few issues that I have with their video is actually that most of this b-roll is slowed down but it clearly wasn't actually filmed on high frame rate cameras so it ends up just looking very framey and not very good. This is like a relatively minor issue but it, it would be nice if you know in the future is something that could be a bit more polished. It would be nice if it was a bit more polished but for the price that it's at it's completely fine. Uh, speaking of polish, this game crashed for me on Switch every time I finished it, and I mean when I finished it. So this game has multiple endings and multiple uh, possible killers like I mentioned before. So I played through it multiple times, every time after I'd seen the ending, which to be fair it shows you the ending, I only assume I missed the credits or it bouncing you back to the main screen, it crashed. No idea why, hopefully it gets patched at some point. Doesn't seem like from poking about online, it doesn't seem like you miss anything from this. And it might just be my Switch for some reason, but it's it happened every single time for me. It's just weird. So if you're into adventure games, FMV games, or just pulpy kind of whodunit stories, the shapeshifting detective is a really good one. Uh, I think it's worth a look. I played it on the Switch, I played it docked and undocked, it looked really nice in both. It's one of those games that scales down onto the Switch screen really well, which you can expect because it's just high resolution video, so pushing it down onto a 720p screen, it should look nice, but uh, it does. It's, yeah, definitely worth playing. If you're into FMV games in general, I think this is one of the better ones that we've had in recent years. It's definitely a lot better than this, de this developer's previous game, uh, The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker, which I enjoyed because it had some interesting new mechanics in it, but it wasn't... It, the story wasn't super interesting compared to this. This, I think they definitely kind of nailed it. So yeah, take a look. Thanks for watching guys, and if you enjoyed, please go watch our other videos and listen to our podcast and go to our website and all that stuff. Like and subscribe, you know, the usual guff. Um, we're hoping to get more videos up more regularly in the future. I know I say this every time I upload a video, but for real this time, like I've started building a bit of a buffer of videos and we're going to do Game of the Year videos again this year and probably after those, maybe slightly before those, we'll start rolling out this buffer of videos so that we have more regular content at least for a little while and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, thanks everyone. You're just going to sit there and fidget. <laughs>